Hello and welcome to the third Android with OpenCV video tutorial. Sorry for not having a video for over a month, but it's taken me a long time to decide what I should teach in this video. Thankfully, an awesome commenter on my video tutorial too made a request for me to jump straight into OpenCV and Android NDK development. However, it still took me a long time to figure out how I might begin teaching this content, because compared to my last two, this is a lot less procedural. So what I've decided to do is step by step go through how to make a camera viewfinder app using OpenCV components instead of Android's libraries. As I go through the content I'll explain some OpenCV concepts, but I'll assume you currently understand some basic Android concepts such as activities, views, callbacks, listeners and threads. If enough people want me to go over these in more detail I'll make another video explaining them. Hopefully once you learn how to make this app you'll get the bigger picture. Now here's some background on how OpenCV works. Remember how OpenCV Manager needed to be installed separately from your app? Well that's because the app itself doesn't contain much OpenCV code. Most of the OpenCV code is contained inside OpenCV Manager. The OpenCV guys decided that it was much better to have OpenCV service running externally from your app. This kind of makes sense as OpenCV uses native C code and thus it doesn't even run on the Delvic VM, and therefore not portable between architectures. If your app did contain all the OpenCV code, it would also need to carry binaries for all supported architectures of Android, making it needlessly large. So therefore, you need to start the OpenCV service separately, and bind your activity to the service before you can instantiate OpenCV components with the new operator. If you don't, an exception will be thrown as soon as your app starts, and that makes me very angry every time it happens. So first thing, after creating a project, which you hopefully know how to do by now, is to add OpenCV as a library to this project. Just open your project's properties and select Android on the list, then select the Add under the Libraries section. You should have OpenCV imported into your workspace, so you can just select it and press OK. My previous video tutorial will cover importing OpenCV into your workspace. Next thing, you've got to go to the manifest and declare that you're going to use a camera in this app. Just because you're using OpenCV components doesn't mean you are exempt from this. Just add a whole lot of lines as shown on the screen. Ooh, and it seems that it doesn't like me putting it down the bottom. It's only a warning, but I'll just move it to the top anyways. It's happier with that. It's better anyways. You should always declare permissions before you declare your application. Right, let's get on with the activity source code. So how do we start? Let's draw a diagram. The nice thing about object oriented is that you can just build your app by assembling building blocks. Okay, maybe not, but I promise an illustration will make life easier. Obviously, we need to start with an activity. Now you all know how to do that, so I won't need to show you. Secondly, you'll need to put several fields in this activity. Now since OpenCV is an external service, you'll need a listener object. This will keep track of the service binding process to your activity, and make the appropriate callbacks when certain stages have been reached. This object type is called base loader callback, and I've named my instance of it M loader callback. Then you'll need a handler object to interface the camera peripheral of your phone, specifically the OpenCV one, which is called Java Camera View. And I'm going to call my instance of it M OpenCV Camera View. Next thing I'm going to import is the helper function for binding the OpenCV service to my activity. That's called the OpenCV Loader. The activity must connect to the OpenCV service on the onResume event of the activity initialization process. In other words, just after the activity has been created, but right before the activity becomes tangible to the user. So the, on the onResume callback, add this line. This calls the helper function to bind your activity with the OpenCV service. It takes three arguments. 
The first one is what version of OpenCV you're using. Now this is a string, and you should use one of the template strings that OpenCV provides. I'm using 2.4.7, so I've got the 2.4.7 template string. Second argument is the context of the app. Passing the current instance of the activity will give the full context, therefore just put this. The third argument is the listener object that you want to keep track of this binding process with. Now we created one earlier of type base loader callback, and I called it m loader callback. So pass m loader callback into this function. Now the m loader callback object I created isn't exactly a base loader callback type like I mentioned earlier. Instead, what you're creating is a child class of base loader callback. However, this child class has no name, so it's an anonymous class. On the child class, override the on manager connected callback. This is called when OpenCV service has successfully binded to the activity. So in the callback function, add this line, or actually no, these lines. After the events of this callback, you can instantiate OpenCV components with the new operator. What this does is as soon as the OpenCV service binding is successful, we call the enable view method of the Java camera view object to start up the camera view finder. However, the switch case statement also allows for when it fails. As seen in the default case, it just calls the parent classes on manager connected method. The next step is to add a listener object to poll the status of the device's camera peripheral. Now this listener object is called CV camera view listener 2. Now you could just make another anonymous class declaration that extends from it, just like base loader callback, and then override the callback methods. However, as you've seen before, that syntax gets a bit messy, and since a camera view is a full screen thing, it might be conceptually more accurate to transform your activity into the camera view itself. You do this by making your activity class inherit CV camera view listener 2's methods. You do this by adding this line after activity to class declaration. Now here I use implements instead of extends because CV camera view listener 2 is an interface and not a class, but for our case they're pretty much the same. Note that this is the only way Java achieves multiple inheritance. Implementing this interface will give you three callbacks, on camera view started, on camera view stopped, and on camera frame, which are called when the camera becomes active, when the camera stops, and when the camera delivers a frame respectively. Now I just realized I totally forgot to make the activity layout declarations. So open the layout.xml of the activity you were making in the source file and the first thing you need to do is to clear the usage of OpenCV in this XML file. So just add this line at the top which starts with xmlns colon OpenCV. Also, you need to declare a Java camera view widget in your layout. This widget will be handled by the mOpenCVCameraView object we created in our activity class earlier. This widget displays what the camera sees. So declare it like so with the usual layout parameters. I want a full screen so I'm using fill parent. I'm also making it show the FPS rate on the widget with the show FPF att attribute and allowing it to use any camera on the phone with the camera ID attribute. After you finish declaring your layout, go back to the activity source and on the onCreate callback, bind the mOpenCV camera view object to the layout widget. Then set its visibility to visible. Then, you need to tell mOpenCVCameraView what listener object you're using for the camera. Since you've made your activity the listener object, put this as an argument to set CV camera view listener. So here I'm just overriding the onDestroy callback as well, so that I can disable the camera view widget once the activity is finished. This is just a safety thing and is probably not necessary, but you should put it in anyway. Now there's just one more line to add before your camera viewfinder works. Remember the on camera frame callback? It is called when the camera delivers a frame. Before this callback is made, the data from the camera gets wrapped up into this CV camera view frame type and is passed into the callback as an argument named input frame. 
CV camera view frame type is just a collection of matte objects. Matte is short for matrix, but what it really is is a 2D array open CV style. Each of these matte objects in CV camera view frame just represents the camera data in a different color space. We want the RGB data, so let's return input frame.rgba. And now you're done. Just download the program into your phone and have a look. It's not full screen as I expected, the action bar is still present. You've got to make some extra declaration in your layout XML to make it go away. But I'm okay with this, so I'm just going to leave it. Now I know what you're thinking. All I do is just modify the matrix coming from input frame and I can get a fix in real time. And that is exactly what you do. But before doing that, there are a few caveats to pay attention to. To add effects on these matrices, you often have to make intermediate matrices. So therefore, just instantiate a new matte object on the on-camera frame callback, right? Except, there's a problem. OpenCV is programmed in C, so if you perform a new operator on any OpenCV object, it won't get freed by the Java's garbage collector, because it doesn't run on the Delvic VM. You have to free it manually. Luckily, this can be done inside Java by calling the release method of that object. If you don't free it, you'll get memory leaks, and the app will quit unexpectedly without warning, not even as little as a pop-up telling you whether your app has stopped. The logcat won't even catch it either. Now this is where the on-camera view started, and on-camera view stopped callbacks become very useful. You should not allocate memory for OpenCV objects inside the on-camera frame function, because that means you'll allocate it every time the callback is made, which is every time the camera delivers a frame, and it won't be deallocated by the end of the function call because you need to return it. So what you do is you create these objects within the onCamera view started method, and then on the onCamera view stopped callback, deallocate it. Now the next thing, which is not so image editing related, is that anything you do inside these callbacks are made outside of the UI thread. So you can't make changes to the UI elements directly from any of these functions. This is a restriction of Android OS for safety and is overall a good thing. If you do need to make changes, and sometimes, in fact quite a lot, you need to, just use the run on UI thread function as shown here. And that concludes this tutorial. Usually, this kind of content is better delivered across a written tutorial instead of a video one, so please let me know how I did. So don't forget to subscribe and ask questions if necessary.